by Berserkules, the Berserk Her. And today is my second installment of my reviews on the Bible Man TV show. Today's episode, Defeating the Shadow of Doubt. And I doubt it will be good. And the title gives away the end. Now we know he defeats the Shadow of Doubt. That's just lame on top of lame. Oh, and for this episode, the show has become a bit more dark and dynamic. More like a movie than a kid's TV show. And does it work? Does the show look cooler and more sleek? Depends if you think a man in purple and yellow looks more or less sophisticated in a nitty-gritty world. The show then starts off in a church community center, as a bunch of people are about to watch some kids sing and dance. Oh, crap. Not more kids singing. Oh, wait! Before we're subjected to too much singing and dancing, the scene changes to that of the basement of the community center, which the villain, the Shadow of Doubt, has made into his hideout. Wow. Nothing says evil headquarters like a rec center basement. We then see that the Shadow of Doubt has a sidekick named Ludacris and, um, uh, um, Big Bulging Nutsack? What the fuck? This show is for kids? Here, kids, I hope you enjoy the villain's bulge. Look at that thing! What the ball sack? A villain in tight blue spandex showing off his ball bulge? What's the doubt he's supposed to cast? Is he supposed to make kids doubt their sexuality? We then see into the Bible base as Bible Man's secret identity, Miles Peterson, works alongside his sidekick, Coates. Wait, what? Bible Man has a sidekick and his name is Coates? Coates? What kind of name is Coates? Jeepers! Why not call him Pizza or Doorknob? Coates? That's fucking stupid! Why would you name your kid Coates? And if Coates is his hero name, then that's just worse! So, how does a man in army attire relate to the whole Bible theme of this show? Is he in God's army? Does God have a fully decked out military? Does heaven have weapons of mass destruction? So as our biblical duo works in their Bible base, they get a message on their computer from a pastor. Wow, the church really wastes money. Why do you need to use a video message device? He could have just used a phone. Jeepers! Bible man, something's very wrong here. Several of our church members are acting strange. I'm most concerned about a young girl named Kyla. Young girl in trouble? Bible man to the rescue! Lately, Kyla's parents have been struggling with arguing. Struggling with arguing? So is arguing one of the Bible man villains too? Or does Bible man not concern himself with adults arguing? Bible man does tend to favor young kids. Young preteen girls, to be exact. Please come right away. One last thing. We keep finding these. Huh. That's probably not important. Bible-Man then heads over to the church's community center and talks with the little girl. And by talks to her, I mean quotes the Bible at her. And the girl seems to want more depth of the discussion, but thinking the girl might need counseling with her parents is beyond the notice of Bible-Man, as he continues to quote the Bible at her. But the girl doubts things will get better with just talk and prayer. Silly girl, what do you think you can do? Actually actively do something? Dumb little girl, your life is predetermined, and you can't do things for yourself. Just lie back and think of the Bible. God has a plan for you and your parents, and he won't let you down. Now, you said today it all became clear. How? What happened? It just came to me. I was down in the church basement looking for some paint. Then I found this box. I hadn't seen anything like it before, so I opened it. And then it just became clear. God probably had bigger things to worry about. Huh. There's that box thing again. Eh, mustn't be important. Bible Man then decides to investigate the basement. But before he can get to the basement, he is stopped by the pastor who asks if there's anything he can do to help out the little girl. Bible Man tells him to pray for her. Cause calling a counselor is just a dumb idea. Quote the Bible at her and think about her to yourself. That's how you get things done. Heck, that's how I wrote this review. Hi God, it's me Caleb. Please write my Bible Man review for me. Yep, yeah, write it. And make it really funny. No, funnier than that. So Bible Man then goes into the basement and looks around, and ends up finding a little black box, just like the one the little girl found when she started to doubt God. And he opens it. Seriously, he just opens it? The girl said her doubt happened after she opened the box. How does he not realize the box will make him doubt things? What is he, an idiot? Did he open up some box earlier that made him dumb as a doorknob? Jeepers! So opening the box, Bible Man is affected by its doubt power, and then the villain reappears. And we can see his bulge again. 
Why, God, why? I know Bible Man is about confronting evil, but the evil of the bulge is too much. This is a kid's show, is it not? Why must kids be subjected to the crotch? Why, God, why? So the two men then break into battle, and I just hope the villain's tights don't break, and fight each other with their lightsabers. With all the changes from the earlier episodes, it's good to see that they kept these sword battles. So as they continue the fight, whenever the Shadow of Doubt says the word doubt, Bible Man feels doubt and is weakened. Eventually, when Bible Man is very weak from hearing the word doubt a lot, the Shadow of Doubt makes his escape, leaving Bible Man to wonder why he feels the way he does and what's going on. Yeah, he still doesn't realize a little black box filled him with doubt. How is such a simple thing beyond his grasp? How is he a champion on the side of good and this fucking clueless? Does he not exercise his brain enough? And why did the Shadow of Doubt not finish him off when he had the chance? So Bible Man heads over to his secret base and tries to analyze what happened to him, using computers, microscopes, books, and test tubes. You dork! You felt doubt! How is it that hard to figure out? Doubt! Don't use your science machines and beakers to try and figure it out! Just think! It's simple! Doubt! You felt doubt! D-O-U-B-T! Doubt! Jesus Christ! So Bible Man, unable to figure out what's happening to him, don't ask me how, decides to go back and talk to the little girl some more. Is that his solution to everything? Go and talk to a little girl? Jeepers, this is creepy! So he goes and visits the little girl, and tells her more Bible quotes, and she expresses her dissatisfaction with him and God. This causes the Shadow of Doubt, who is listening in, to express his happiness on the subject by making punny jokes about it. Then Ludacris, the Shadow of Doubt sidekick, pops up breaking the fourth wall to point out to the audience the lameness of the jokes the Shadow of Doubt has been saying. That was supposed to be a joke, but it really wasn't that funny. What the fuck? Is this guy trying to take my job? Is he me? Have I transcended reality and am now appearing in the show to mock it? What the fuck? This episode is really crazy. It's almost more messed up than the last episode. But at least it doesn't have song and dance numbers. Oh shit. The Shadow of Doubt then starts to dance around with his two female minions as backup dancers. It's one thing to have your minions fight people and kidnap people for you, but making your minions dance behind you in sync? That's evil. True evil. Who's the brand new evil in your town? Shadow of Doubt. Who's the baddest bad guy all around? Shadow of Doubt. Who's got the plan to take you down? Shadow of Doubt. Who's both the verb and the noun? Shadow of Doubt. So as they all dance around in unison, a disembodied voice sings a song. Who's singing? Is Satan making an appearance? I don't know, but if someone's singing a goofy song about the Shadow of Doubt, I wouldn't put it past Satan. At least this time the villain is the one dancing and not the kids. Leave the kids alone. So now we get to see his bulge flopping around? Gross. So anyway, after they finish their song and dance number, Bible Man shows up. Um, did he wait for them to finish their dance routine before he interrupted them? I guess that makes sense. It was quite scary. Anyway, our two foes then fight each other with their lightsabers. Hey, that's new! And then Bible Man feels doubt again, and then the villains leave as they get the upper hand. Wow, these villains just love to drag things out. Is this video hell itself? So back to the Bible base we go, as Bible Man continues to try and figure out what's happened to him, and then finally, FINALLY, he realizes he's been affected by doubt. Quick thinking isn't his forte. So with their newfound information, Bible Man and Coates get ready to go and face their foe. And Coates gets his bazooka ready. A bazooka? So Bible Man uses the Sword of the Spirit, and Coates uses a bazooka. Uh, um, bazooka of truth? So they head back to the Shadow of Doubt secret headquarters, i.e. the community center's basement. Is it okay for them not to warn people that there's danger in the basement? Anyway, before facing the villain, Bible Man chats with the little girl again. Okay, seriously, is no one bothered with Bible Man's constant need to talk with this little girl? Anyway, our Bible duo then head down into the Shadow of Doubt's lair with their weapons at the ready. How effective is Coates going to be with that bazooka in close quarters? Then the Shadow of Doubt's female henchmen pop up. 
You see those bad guys? They didn't really have to go through all that smoke and sparks and stuff. They just did it because it looks cooler in the video. Thanks, other me! I couldn't have said it better myself! So the Shadow of Doubt's minions are at the ready, but they've caught the Shadow of Doubt unprepared and in his bathrobe with curlers in his hair. What the fuck?! I don't even know what to say! So again they fight their foes. Gee, I wonder what weapons they'll use. Wow, instead of constant singing like the last episode, this one has constant fighting. You'd think that'd be a good thing. Oh, and Coach uses his bazooka as a melee weapon. That's just good battle technique. I'm so sure. It's just a game, Bible Man. Oh, sure. It's all just fun and games until someone loses an eternity. Yeah, I just lost an eternity watching this show. So in the end, they defeat the Shadow of Doubt, because he disappears, and they go back to their base, where they then get a message from the pastor telling them that the little girl is doing good, and that a family is getting counseling. So the Bible really didn't win out in this one. Huh. Oh, and then Bible Man addresses the audience, reminding us that... Only Jesus is the true superhero. So Bible Man's one of the false idols the Bible warns us of? Huh. So that's it. It's now the end.